hi guys today is a beautiful day and uh, I have a friend of mine here that uh, I've known him for quite some time he was diagnosed with a, a brain tumor and uh, it has really costed a lot a lot a lot it is something that he himself is the only guy who can explain and I think is by the grace of God and also good hands of nice doctors he's here with us he has a very nice story that I'm sure if you give it just a few seconds it's going to touch you and it's going to uh, impact something into your life and your life will never be the same again my name is Joe Mwangi uh, and like Kate Moki told you I was um, living a normal life until July 26th when I was diagnosed I went to hospital uh, presenting some challenging uh, breathing difficult in breathing and um, by the grace of God or through the Spirit of God I visited um, MP Shah Hospital uh, whereby the doctor who I found, Dr. Muchoki, uh, spent a lot of time uh, trying to understand my lifestyle and my background and um, after our discussion with her uh, she recommended uh, that I undergo some procedures uh, the normal procedures were for me to do a CT scan for the chest because uh, of my uh, my issue with breathing and so she recommended I undergo some tests for the kidney and liver because of my lifestyle uh, and uh, of drinking and sometimes smoking so as I was about to leave to the uh, to go to the lab for the tests uh, she asked me if there was anything else uh, that probably in my childhood or maybe uh, something I'd gone through that probably I, I, I'd, uh, I, that was, I would mention to her, or I remember. So I remember that uh, I initially experienced some numbness, uh, especially during cold months, like that was a cold month in July. So numbness on the left hand and left uh, foot. And um, after telling her uh, this as a by the way, um, she took it seriously and she explained to me that uh, most of the things that cause numbness emanate from the nervous system, which sits in the brain. So she requested me to, uh, as I was going to go along, um, uh, uh, do the other tests, if I could also do a, a test for the CT scan for the head. Uh, at this stage, I was not convinced because I had never presented any kind of uh, symptom, uh, either through headaches or uh, through poor vision uh, of eyesight that could suggest that I have an issue with my, with my head. So I think through the inner uh, voice, inner conscience, uh, the Spirit of God was able to convince me to accept to undergo that test, which I did. And after going through all these tests, uh, all the tests that uh, I, would, I would deem maybe they brought me to hospital, those were the tests for the chest and the tests for the, for the lungs and the tests for the kidneys, turned out to be uh, negative, meaning that I was good. But the only test that came as a by the way, which was the test for the head, then the CT scan showed that I had a cyst on my right side of the brain. Uh, but at this stage, the CT scan was not conclusive. So the doctor requested me further to do another, another test, an MRI for the, for, the, for, the, for the brain, so that she could be in a position to actually narrow down what the cyst would be. Uh, which again, uh, through, uh, uh, it was not an easy, easy decision to make, but uh, through the inner conscience, or the Spirit of God, I was able to uh, accept and to the extreme of going ahead and paying from my pocket because at that stage my insurance limit for the day had already been uh, stretched. So I underwent that and after um, uh, the weekend went away, uh, that following week on Monday, uh, the results came out and it was now apparent uh, when I saw the doctor, she was uh, now uh, very sure that I had a tumor of the brain, which was a DNET. DNET meaning it was not uh, cancerous. So at that stage, she broke the news to me. It was not an easy moment for me. Coming from, from a background where I had never even one day uh, been admitted to hospital for any sickness whatsoever. Coming from the background that uh, a few weeks I had my birthday party and it was one of the best days in my life coming from the background that I was at the epitome of my work because um, I was um, um, uh, um, rated highly at my, my, my job. I could not believe it. 
but unfortunately that was the reality i immediately uh, broke down uh, i reached out to my wife who was, she was also following up to see whether i'd gotten the results and my managers at work and for all of us as a family it was not an easy moment knowing that there some few weeks or some few moments ago my life was filled with happiness and joy and energy and now these news have come in and um, they have really devastated me thinking of the worst being death because of the diagnosis of the brain tumor and also other side effects of blindness loss of speech permanent paralysis uh, disabled the disability that could be beyond that could probably uh, make me never to resume my job or uh, resume my cause or become productive in life. That was a very difficult moment, I can tell you. But again, uh, it was a sad reality and I had to do something about it. So my doctor at that stage informed me that she was a general practitioner. And uh, from my experience as a general practitioner, she had seen many people go through or be, being diagnosed with uh, my situation or the DNET uh, tumors and most of them were able to be managed locally in the country either through uh, medicine or through surgery and they were able to resume back their their daily lives so that in a bit gave me some um, some hope but she also um, put a disclaimer that uh, the only people would be able to advise uh, uh, moving forward would be the specialists who are either the neurosurgeons or the neurologists then she recommended me and referred me to the neurologist and uh, from there I started my journey to look for cure or at least to look for a way out or a solution to my problems. Uh, in the search for, my, uh, for this cure to my, my sickness, I consulted widely with many uh, specialists because I was still in denial. I could not imagine how someone who, who drove himself to hospital, someone who came to hospital without complaining of any headache, someone who really complained or fell sick or uh, found himself in, in uh, 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 being admitted in hospital now was diagnosed with a DNET tumor of the brain. So I've, I, the first step, I spoke to my family, I spoke to my wife and we agreed. Uh, we speak to our insurance company just to give us some uh, um, uh, references to the best uh, ne neurologists and neurosurgeons. I visited more than five of the specialists and it was confirmed from each and every one that I visited that the, the growth was present, it was real, the tumor was present, it was real, but the good thing, it was a DNET, it was not malignant. And every, each and every one of them advised and, uh, that the only way that I could be able to survive this was to undergo the brain surgery, uh, which is called cryonatomy. That is opening up a uh, skull to, to access the tumor and remove it. So on 2nd August, after a lot of um, uh, consulting and also a lot of denial, um, I made up my decision on 2nd August to undergo uh, the brain surgery. It was never real. It was looking always like a, it's, a, it's, it's a dream. Until that day when I was admitted in Nairobi hospital. And um, I was admitted the previous night before I could go undergo the, the procedure, which was on 2nd August. Reality checked on me uh, the last uh, 10 minutes before I was rushed to uh, the theater. That's when I looked at the face of my wife and my mom and uh, my loved ones, my children, and I shed my tears because it was apparent now clear to me that from the doctors, what they elaborated to me that by doing this, undergoing this procedure, there were risks associated to it. Uh, the biggest risk, of course, would have been death. Uh, which was uh, uh, at least the, the, the odds were 80 to 20 percent, 80 percent of survival, 20 percent to die. And uh, the after side effects of the surgery would have been uh, paralysis, permanent paralysis, would have been uh, loss of sight, blindness, would have been loss of speech, becoming uh, deaf, uh, would have been loss of coordination, in my body and uh, possibly never been able to go back to resume back my normal life uh, to, 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 to be able to, to do the normal functions of my duties. 
So that reality check took me 10 minutes before the theater. When the, the doctor walked in into my, my room and said, you need to prepare yourself because in the next 10 minutes we need you into the theater room. So it, things happened so fast. At that particular moment I went, uh, uh, I was in prayer, everyone was in prayer, my mom was in prayer, I was in prayer. I can honestly say we prayed more than a hundred times the, our, our Lord's uh, prayer, our Father what in heaven. And uh, I, I agreed and came into terms with myself. During this phase I had already written a will because I, I was already considering the fact that I would never make it. So I wrote a will and uh, never shared it with my family but sent it to my lawyer. Uh, with a request that he would only share it with my family uh, once it was confirmed that I was not, uh, um, I, I didn't make it out of the theater. So from this I said a prayer because I had gotten saved uh, out, out of all these situations I'd given my life to Jesus and I reminded God that uh, I made a covenant with my God that after those 10 minutes of being taken to theater whatever would happen after the surgery which was went on for 15 hours that since I'd given my life to Jesus, if God was giving me another chance to live, then I would live all my other life, my rest of my life, uh, uh, just uh, serving Him. Because, to be honest, before I was diagnosed with the, uh, the brain tumor, I used to be a party animal, I used to have a lot of fun, I used not to be the best uh, in terms of uh, spiritual matters. So I was pushed away and I got into the theater room, my surgery was 15 hours. That is the only 15 hours of my life I cannot account for. I don't know what, what went through, uh, what happened. And uh, of course, after that, the 15 hour surgery, I was able to get out of theater, thank God. I uh, came out alive, I was taken to ICU at Nairobi Hospital for uh, five days. And uh, post ICU, I was taken to HDU for another three days and eventually taken to a private room where I was closely monitored by specialists, doctors and, and uh, nurses. All in all, I was in hospital for since 2nd August up to uh, September 14th. So now, let me ask you, um, mm. after you're from the hospital, what, um, how was your life like? Because I believe you're just from a coma for four, mm. four days. Mm. And as well, you've told me that you also stayed in the in the ICU for how long was it? Five days. Five days. Uh, of course, after that, you've been in the hospital for almost a month and a half. How did you resume back to life, you know, resuming back mm. to the normal life? How was it? Okay, uh, like I said, uh, it was not easy. The entire, from the diagnosis and going through the surgery and being discharged from hospital. One is that, uh, as I, I can mention now, when I was in hospital, I realized that I had lost uh, my, my capability to walk. So even post-hospital, I had to work on that. So there was a lot of support from the family in terms of uh, physiotherapists. And I could not do anything on my own. I could not be able to dress myself. I could not be able to shower. Things that I used to take for granted now became like they are, I used to think they were just pre, uh, a pre, uh, they, I never used to think that they could be privileges. They became a privilege to me. So going to the toilet, I had to be escorted by somebody. Uh, just basic things like uh, wearing clothes. My wife was there to always ensure that I wear them the right way and the correct way. And also walking. So I could not walk, I was on a wheelchair. So all this while when I was uh, post hospital. And uh, I thank God because uh, God really gave me the grace and favor. And uh, after a while, after probably um, two weeks again, I started walking, uh, of course, with the, with the help of an aide. And uh, life became also difficult on me and also, also for my family because my kids could not understand what had happened to their father because uh, some few weeks, a month before ago, I was able to uh, lift them up, play with them, be able to drive them around. Now I'm out of hospital, I can't do that. I cannot lift them, live alone lifting them. I cannot even be able to handle myself alone. So it was very difficult on me. Again, it was emotional because uh, I, like I'd, I'd gone back to learning everything again. Yeah, uh, I'd, I'd gone back to learning how to wash myself, how to be able to uh, clothe myself, how to walk again. So it was like I'd been taken back to square one. 
So after that, um, I thank God for the support of the family. I was on medication. I, I continued with physiotherapies. And uh, I thank God because the journey was not easy after uh, being discharged because I could get a lot of anxiety attacks at night. Um, and uh, sometimes I would wake up uh, in the morning and find some blood stains in my pillow from the wound, the brain wound, uh, from the head wound. And uh, uh, unfortunately is that we have a few uh, neurosurgeons in Kenya and uh, it became quite a challenge because sometimes I could not even be able to, to reach my neurosurgeon to explain to him what I'm going through. So it was just a matter of staying with hope uh, that the next day would be a better day. So let me, let me ask you something. What are some of the things that you've learned through uh, this whole ordeal? Because most people don't really realize uh, you can be one day healthy and the next day uh, things have gone north. Yeah. So I think, uh, let me begin the spirituality. I think every day that I look at myself, I see a miracle. Every day that I live for me is a testimony. Uh, because, like I told you, the doctors gave me odds of death, odds of being blind, odds of losing my speech, odds, odds of being crippled. As I'm talking to you right now, if you look at me, I'm more blind, I can't see. If you look at me, I'm more dead, I'm alive. If you look at me, and probably from this you can't see, but I'm able to walk. The doctors gave me, their, based on their knowledge, the timelines that I would take to recover and resume back to my normal life. And most of them were put in the earliest chance of me being able to resume work at six months. And through God's um, grace and favor, I was able to go back to work after three months, after two months, actually three months of, uh, of being out of hospital. And I was unable to drive myself for some time. As I'm talking to you, I'm able to drive myself and be able to do everything on my own in terms of feeding myself, washing myself, clothing myself. So I want to encourage everybody out there that those who don't believe that God exists, they should look at me. For me, this is a miracle. This is a miracle. You should just look at me and every time you, you tend to forget that God exists, remember my story. And the other thing is about the biggest lesson for all this is that one, family is very important. For me, I don't think I would have made it, uh, uh, my recovery would have been this fast if I did not have a caring and loving family. I thank my mom for, um, especially for her prayers and her support, my wife, uh, my brothers and sisters and entire family members for them being there for me. So my lesson to everyone is that when you are in the right health, when you're having your, your brightest moments, please don't forget about your family. You should treasure them because there'll come a time that you'll need them the most. Your money will not work for you. The other lesson that I've learned is that, uh, like I told you, this for me, a brain surgery is a very expensive uh, affair. So it, would, it costed me around three million. If I never went to hospital, if I never shared with my doctor every small detail, preferably right now, probably, I will still not be here talking to you. Never look at anything that you're feeling as a small thing. Because for me, numbness was a small thing. It never stopped me from doing my daily duties. Never stopped me from uh, carrying out my, myself the way I'm supposed to. But by mentioning that to the doctor, what I thought was the smallest thing is what has changed my life today. So my encouragement to everybody, when you go to hospital, please, when you find a doctor who's willing to listen to you, always share even what you, do, you think does not make sense to them. That they might capture that and maybe uh, uh, from that they might help you with how you uh, diagnose you with whatever that they're supposed to diagnose you with. The other thing that I think it uh, came out very strongly is that for me, when you, when you have money right now, I would encourage most of you to take up insurance because I don't know how it would have been if I never had a job I, and my, my employer was very supportive to me and I did not, not have an insurance cover. I don't know what would have happened because you can imagine a cost of three million shillings. It would have meant probably I would have become a burden to my family. They would have to dispose a lot of our family properties. We would have had to go become a burden to our friends in terms of fundraising. So if you have the chance right now to take up insurance, please take it up. And it's also very advisable for people to go for checkups because for me, I was never ill. I'm, I can't remember a day I, I never went to, to, to work because of I'm, I'm, I'm in hospital or I'm, I'm sick. So you might think you are healthy, yes. 
but it's always advisable at least once in a year or three times in a year go for checkups it doesn't choose sickness does not choose people based on their status just go for those checkups it will really help so um it's really been a wonderful time um actually i can't speak more because it's a very self explanatory kind of a story and uh, it has challenged me with the various things that put God first you know don't just do things um, as if you own everything you know he was a very energetic guy he has done a lot of things I knew him from some time back he was really full of life full of so much you know and all of a sudden you know things just turn in a different way and another thing um, if you love people, tell them whenever this time, you know. Don't just sit down and say, I'll tell them later. No, don't do that. If, if you love them, tell them because anything happens. And the third thing that I've learned, very vital uh, information is that if you have the chance, always have an insurance. Kenya right now, we may not all afford uh, private insurance, but we have NHIF. We have other different kinds of insurance. If you can afford private insurance, kindly have it. Just have it for you, for your family. You never know who it may affect. Enough said, that was really a touching story. So thank you very much for watching this uh, today's episode. And I would like to kindly ask you to subscribe down there. There is a, uh, a subscription button down there. Kindly subscribe because there's a lot much more coming. Such kind of stories. Not all the time we'll have sad stories. But when they come over, it's good. Let's learn something. And of course, uh, press the notification button so that you can not be able to miss any of the videos. You can always get a notification whenever there's a new video coming up. Thank you very much. Have a blessed, blessed time.